Hello, everyone, and good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you might be joining us from today. Today's webinar is one that I've been looking forward to for a couple of weeks now. Uh, we'll be covering all things eClinical Works optimization. So, my name is Caitlin Hausman. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager for Ravel. I'll be your organizer today. With me, we have three special presenters. Uh, the first, Adrian Shrimp, one of our sales consultants. Adrian's going to be hopping on at the end of the webinar. Presenting on EMR features, we have Therese Molinaire, a certified eClinical Works trainer with over 14 years of experience, actually, on the software. We also have a member of our client success team on the line, Kim White. She is a client performance manager at Ravel. So she works with a lot of our revenue cycle management clients to provide consulting and guidance on all aspects of the revenue cycle. Kim also has a background uh, in eClinical Works PM optimization. So she's gonna be focusing on some of those PM features we wanna highlight today. Before we get started, if you have any questions, use the Q&A box on your screen. We'll get to those questions at the end of the presentation. We're also recording the webinar, so we'll send you an email later today with that recording and the slide deck. And last, on behalf of everyone at Ravel, I wanna say thank you. We're still battling COVID-19. We know you're on the front lines of this battle, taking care of patients every day, and there's just a lot changing day to day. So we wanna say thank you and know that we're here as a resource for all things eClinical Works or revenue cycle management, should you need it. So moving forward, uh, I also wanna say thanks for joining us today. We, we really promise to make the most of the hour. We have a really packed agenda. Um, and really what we started with was how can I better use eClinical Works? I think that's really the question on everybody's mind. And because it's such a big question, we do wanna take a quick minute and we're gonna launch a poll here. So let me get that launched. All right. And the poll is, what is your biggest barrier to eClinical Works optimization? And we have a few options on here. You can select more than one. We know these can all kind of exist at the same time. So go ahead and select whichever one or want whichever answer, I guess, multiple answers are relevant to your clinic. And then I think that's just gonna kind of provide us with some insight um, on, the, on the information that we're sharing today, most definitely. So we'll give it just a minute here. I have some interesting responses coming in and I'll share these results with you once we've got some. All right, looks like they're coming to a standstill. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it and we will share those results. And it looks like the one that most of you answered is the biggest barrier is having um, a lack of time. So I don't think that that is a surprise to anyone that is on the line. The second, obviously unsure how to start. So this is some really great uh, feedback and I think this is gonna be really useful for today's presentation. Here, what we have on this screen um, is our agenda that we've put together for today. And as we were building the agenda, we really looked at from all the database optimizations that our trainers have done and just from working with our RCM clients, what can we present on um, that's gonna be the most useful? So we know everyone has a different challenge depending on their adoption journey with eClinical Works. So here you can see what we're gonna cover as far as um, setting up staff favorites, orders button, and then some different tools within the practice management part of the system that are gonna help you kind of save time and focus on productivity. So now I am actually gonna change the presenter to you, Therese. And you can see my screen, Caitlin? All set. All right. All right, perfect. I'm gonna apologize ahead of time. Sometimes I get a little excited when I'm training, so um, I click too fast, so I'm gonna try to pace myself for everyone. So today it's all about the stars. I'm going to show you how to save time by setting up your favorite staff members, favorite labs, x-rays, procedures, medications, diagnoses, and show you the workflow on how to use those items. I'm also going to show you the benefits of using the orders tab in the progress note. The orders tab is probably one of the most underutilized functionalities within ECW 
that's based on my opinion now. So anyway, I can't wait to show you that. Two ways that you can build your favorite. One way is if you go to admin and you go to providers. I can do it from staff as well. This situation is when you have a brand new provider and you want to copy from an existing provider just to make it easier from them. So in this particular window, I'll cancel out of here. Yeah, no, I'm in the right window. So I am on the assigned to, do you see this option? So I can simply click a name and merge it over to the right hand side. I can do one, you know, click several at a time if I want and merge them over all at one time. And it says, you know, selected staff added to my favorites. I also have the option that I can choose a staff member from up here on the right hand side. So I could choose Tiffany. And what I do when I choose someone from this listing, I take on their favorites. I'm assigning their favorites to my provider. I have the ability that I can, if I made a mistake and I want to remove people, I can. I also can change the order so I can move this around however I want to. I always encourage you to put yourself in that list in case you need to assign something to yourself. So again, you can merge them by simply clicking the, these boxes over on the left and clicking the arrow to merge them over to the right. Or you can also copy from an existing staff member and take on their favorites, such as what I have here. Remember, click and drag, you can change the order, okay? This same option, if I go to admin and I go to staff, applies as well. So when you're having new staff members and you want to um, copy them so that you don't have to, you know, they already have their favorite set up, you can simply click on one and the same principle applies. You have to find, hang on just a second. There you go, configure my assigned favorites and the same principle applies. You simply click your staff members over and you can change the order or you can come up here and choose from any staff member and apply their favorites, such as what I'm doing here. I can pick anyone, okay? Again, I can change the order from within here, okay? So if I'm gonna go ahead and click okay, and I'm gonna show you how that is going to apply when I go to a task and how you can also change your favorites or add to your favorites on the fly. So if I click on my tea jelly bean, I have a telephone encounter that is assigned to Therese Molinaire, so I'm gonna click on it. Remember, I'm trying to get to the point that I don't have to scroll up and down, that I can easily see my favorites, which is going to save me clicks, right? So I'm going to get rid of my assigned to with Therese Molinaire right here, whoops. Okay, now I can show you my favorites. See my star right here? Remember today, it's all about the stars, right? So if I click my stars, here's my favorites list. And I can go to my next page and I can choose whomever I want to assign it to. So if I chose Meredith. Now, another option that you have in this window is if I uncheck my stars, okay? Remember this ellipsis button right here to the right. If I click on it, do you see how it's showing my stars over here on the right? These are my favorites, right? So I have the ability, again, at this point, I can uncheck a star if I want to remove them from my favorites. And this is done on the fly while you're, you're, you're seeing your patient, you're working your task, you realize that, you know, you need to add somebody else to your favorites. You can quickly do it, but you have to go to the ellipsis button. You also have um, the ability to click on anyone and add more as well. So you can add to or you can take away. So if I click OK, and that's how you build your favorites list from a task. Just remember, if I come here, I can get rid of, I can highlight this, there's a little X there. I can click on my stars and, and I can see the favorites. I can uncheck my star or I can go to the ellipsis button and build my favorites or reconfigure my favorites on the fly. All right, and that is staff favorites. 
Next, I'm going to show you how you can set up your favorite labs, your favorite DI, and your favorite procedures. This is really simple, okay? So remember I went from practice and I built this star. I'm gonna do the same thing, and at the end, I'm gonna show you how that all applies, because I'm building my favorite places that I go in ECW on the fly. So I'm gonna go to EMR, and I'm gonna go to Labs DI Procedures. I know I'm gonna go into labs. I know I'm gonna go into imaging because I'm there a lot. So I'm gonna click those stars as well. So I'm gonna click on labs. Now, in here, it's important to know that if you have a lab interface, you may wanna build your favorites by lab interface. In this particular case, I don't have a lab interface. So I'm gonna go and just pick a couple of labs that I want to build to my favorites. Remember, I'm gonna build my favorites first, then I'm gonna show you how I can view them and show you the workflow. So I'm gonna pull a CBC. Again, all I have to do is click on the star, but I'm gonna click this one for right now. I can click my, my basic metabolic panel. I'm gonna click the star and I'm only gonna do a few just so that you get the, <clears throat> and one more lipid. Okay, so successfully inserted into my favorites. So I'm gonna close. There I built my labs. And also something that we also seem to forget in this window is up here, your filter starts with, with contains. And that's what I'm gonna show you next when I go to DI. So I'm gonna go back to menu, back to EMR. Now I'm gonna go to diagnostic imaging. So in here, this is where starts with or contains when I'm looking for contains is when I want to look for, say, knee. I want to see everything that has knee in it. So I can say, you know, right knee, left knee, right? I can do a CAT scan or an MRI depending upon, you know, what your um, practice specialty is. I also have um, starts with. So I could do EKG. So I'm going to do that as well. I may want to do an echo. And I may want to do, you know, a simple chest x-ray. So I'm going to add those to my favorites. So I'm going to close out of there. And then lastly, I'm going to go to menu, back to EMR, and back to procedures. So you can set up in-house procedures as well in ECW, meaning if you do knee injections, wart removal, lesions removals, nebulizers, all of that, there's a certain process to set those up. But what it does, anything in-house automatically can drop a CPT code that's associated to it. So in this particular case, I'm just going to build these. I'm going to build my injections in because that's something that I, I order quite often. Here's my wart removal. I have a nebulizer treatment, which is already in my favorites. Okay. And lastly, hang on just one second. Okay. I can change it here too as well, contains. So I'm gonna build that into my favorites list. All right, so now I've built my favorites. So how do I use it? Okay, so if I go back to my practice, again, I can go in through my S Jelly Bean and you can see that under Sam Willis, I have two patients. So I'm gonna click on Therese test. I'm gonna go into my progress note. And I'm gonna scroll down. So in order to order something, you need to have diagnoses, right? So while I'm showing you this, I'm gonna build my favorites, okay? So if I go to assessment, in this window, again, in browser, they make it so easy to build your favorites list. In the EXE, it was very complicated. You would have to go to, you know, the, the classic view. You would have to configure your category, and then you would have to add them in one by one. It was a very tedious process. But now in here, I get to build my favorites. So if I click on my star, I can already see, whoops, what I have in my favorites. Okay, but I'm gonna uncheck it to build more. So I'm going to choose abdominal pain. And I'm going to, whoops. So if I click on abdominal pain, I want to drill down and clarify it further. I'm gonna choose epigastric and click okay. 
once I've selected it, I build it to my favorites. Again, I'm just going to choose different diagnoses, you know, at, at random. So I can say, whoops, knee pain. And in here, I can do knee pain, right? I can clarify my knee pain, right or left. Whoops, I'm gonna change it and put this one. Click OK. And again, I can build it and click all of these if I want and put them in my favorites as well. I also, I'm gonna do one more for you so I can search by COPD and I can click it and I'm gonna drill down further and add that to my favorites list as well. Again, I can do, when you're in this window, you can build your favorites on the fly and put many in at one time. So now I added epigastric, knee pain, right, and COPD. So now if I take out COPD and I click on my star, here's my next page, here's the rest of my other di favorite diagnoses, okay? So that's setting up your favorite diagnosis. So now that I have my diagnosis in the system, right, in my progress note, now I'm gonna show you how I can use my favorites that I built for labs, DI, and procedures. So there's many different ways to use ECW. You all will figure you know, that out as well. One person goes in, this way, another person does it another way. And that's one of the things I love about ECW. But if I click on this drop down by add, you see where I can add a, a diagnosis, a medication, labs, DI. You know, we're all creatures of habit. I like to go over here and use my quick links. So that's where how I, I use it and it, it works for me. So in this particular window, I have the ability, right, to see my favorites. If I click on the star, here's all of my favorites that I built in my list. Now, if I want that to default for me every time I come into this window, you see the settings cog. I can click on the settings cog and I can say show my favorite labs. And I like the default lookup by contains. So I can click OK. So if I go to another tab or I get out and I come back in, my favorite labs, hang on just a second. My favorite labs are supposed to default for me. Hang on just a second. In a second, I'm gonna close out and come back in. I don't know, I apologize, but if I click on the star, they'll display, okay? If I go to DI, my diagnostic imaging, again, simply by clicking on the star will allow my favorite x-rays to appear. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and order a knee x-ray. Again, I know that I've assigned it to epigastric pain, so just bear with me. There's a part of my, my madness. If I go back to labs, I'm gonna get, click on a few of my favorite labs. Okay, so I've added these labs over here on the right. Now, if I wanted to change the diagnoses on the fly for a lab, I could do that from here if I wanted. So let's say this complete metabolic panel, I needed it to be with um, uh, my COPD instead. I could change it by clicking on the I. Okay, lastly, I wanna show you my favorite procedures. Again, when I'm in here, I simply click on my star and they appear and I can order whatever I want. And I'm going to go ahead and now, so that's how you can see the workflow of your favorite labs, DI procedures. All you have to do once they're built is click on the star and they'll display. So now I'm gonna show you how you can add to your favorite medications list. Now, there is a setting in my settings, it's on the defaults to tab, and it is um, default drug dosages lookup, and I usually choose the option of both, okay? 
And so remember that is my settings, defaults to tab, default drug dosages, look up by both. Okay, that way I can look up standard and by my favorites. Now, if I were to click on my star right now, you would already see some things that are in my list already. So I'm gonna build it on the fly. So you can do this as you see patients or one day you can put a test patient on the schedule and build a whole bunch of them all at one time. So in here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up Synthroid and it always has a check mark, which means it's gonna show interactions and I can choose whichever strength I want. I can click on the pencil and what I'm gonna do is it's on an empty stomach orally once a day for 30 days and I can say that I want six refills. You can also say you want 11 refills or whatever it is if it's built in the list. I'm gonna add it as a favorite. It's gonna pull an NDC code in which this is correct because you want it to have the appropriate NDC code and I'm gonna click OK. Click OK again. Click OK again. And this is basically telling me that um, uh, it, it already interacts with Coumadin, which is an allergy that I have. So just to show you that that does work. <laughs> I'm also gonna show you um, Xanax, which if I pull up Xanax, again, I there's no duration dispense refill. So I'm gonna choose 0.5. And this is where I'm configuring my favorites, right, to pull these fields as well so that I don't always have to put them in. So if you are ordering medications and you're constantly having to modify them, this is definitely a time saver for you. And so if I say 30 days and I'm going to suspend 60 because it's twice a day and I'm going to give them three refills, I can add that as a favorite and click OK and click OK again. Again, it's an it's a interaction with my Coumadin. So right now, if I get rid of these two, you can now see that Xanax and, hang on a second. Oh, I know what I need to do. Sometimes you have to make it, force it to reset itself. So if I go back in and now I click my star, they should be in my list. So see how Synthroid is in my list? You unclick, it's really um, pretty simple to add it. You just, you know, can start with your top 10 medications and add them in at one time. Okay, so I'm gonna X out of here and now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna show you the orders tab. So we've showed you, I've showed you the staff favorites. I've showed you how to set up your favorite labs, DI procedures, your favorite diagnoses right? I showed you how to order them. Now I want to talk about this underutilized tab right here called the orders tab. So I'm going to focus <clears throat> on add, DI, add diagnosis, manage orders, and order details. So you're probably wondering, well, why use this? Well, I mean, in if the MA or the provider needs to order something, he can enter only one diagnosis from here and order all of his tests and then later come back and reassociate them. Or it's just a quick way if the MAs, there's some quick orders or you know the in-house things that they order most commonly, they know the provider wants to order these things and they come in and order them ahead of time. This is another option that you can use this for. So if I click on add diagnosis, I have the ability and I could have done all of my treatment from this window right here without going to treatment. I could have built my diagnosis in over here to the right. I could have searched for just say sore throat if I wanted to and I could have added that on my, a diagnosis on the fly. If I go to manage my orders, Manage my orders takes me to the treatment window where I just was. So I have the ability, labs, DI, procedures, right? Add a new medication. I could have done it all from this window as well, right? But I already ordered it. And so you can see my CBC, my comp, here's my, my x-ray of my knee, and here's my procedure that I ordered already. So if I click close, I can close out of here. But now, this button right here, 
this button right here is gonna be your new best friend. I don't know how many of you have ever ordered medication and then you don't know how to change the diagnosis so you delete it and reassociate it. Well, I'm about to show you something that's gonna save you a lot of time. In here, this first tab shows you the CPT ICD association that you've done with your, when I ordered my procedures and my in-house um, x-ray. But this next tab right here, this ICD order mapping, this is where it's a one-stop place where you can change the diagnosis for the things that you ordered. So do you see how my Synthroid is linked to epigastric pain? And I know this is out of the ordinary, but if I wanted to reassociate it to, you know, say chronic pain, right? I know that I can add another diagnosis, but if I also wanted to say Xanax and I wanted to reassociate it to pain in the knee or sore throat or whatever, I could pick whichever diagnosis I want. Same thing with my CBC, my complete metabolic panel, and the x-ray of the knee and my nebulizer treatment. This is the only place that I know of in ECW where you can change the diagnosis association for medications. But it also allows you to order a lot of things at one time, you know, at least order them and then come back in and change the association. So you can do that from this window and it's from orders and then this order details. There is one place in eClinical Works, where you can also see, hang on a second, if I can scroll back up, um, the order details as well. So if I go to Progress Note and I scroll back down, sorry, have a little bit of lag time, and I click on my treatment, down at the bottom, and, I, and just so that you know, another train showed me this, so we don't always know everything. It's, there's a lot to know in ECW. If I click this drop down or this drop up arrow, do you see order details? I have it from here as well. So if I click on it, I can reassociate from here as well. So just to let you know that it also appears in the treatment window as well. So if I X out of here and I cancel out of here, and one last thing to show you. Remember, I showed you a practice. I went to resource. I clicked my star. Anywhere that you go, often throughout the day, right, you can build your favorites list right here. So for those things that you do most commonly and where you go, depending upon your role, you can build your favorites list so it's going to save you clicks in the long run from going to practice or admin or wherever it is you go, you can get them all in one spot. So that does conclude my part of the presentation, which the stars have it. And now I'm going to change the presenter to Kim. Okay, great. Thank you, Therese. That was a lot of very, very helpful information. I learned uh, quite a bit there at the end, too, with that order details. So thank you for showing all of that. You're welcome. Well, we'll go ahead and get started then with some of the uh, practice management tools or um, kind of optimal processes just to help you with um, your workflow, cut down on some steps. Um, Therese, you know, said it very well at the beginning that there's so many different ways to do things in ECW, sometimes just even multiple ways to get to the same place. Um, and we'll probably see that a little bit as well. Um, but the, the items that I'm gonna cover um, for efficiency and tracking, we're gonna go over the action templates um, and no-show CPT rules. Um, we're going to look at the payment plan module, and then I'm gonna give some tips and tricks on you know, how to make mass account balance um, write-offs how to update claims in mass and different things like that. So, but I'll, I'll go ahead and get started with the action template. So a lot of times um, here at Ravel, we do use actions with our clients a lot. Um, I know sometimes whenever we work with practices, they also use them for clinical or administrative reasons. Um, of course, we're using it a lot for um, revenue cycle reasons. But one thing that, is, you know, really a practice of any size, but especially practices that are of a larger size, 
Um, a lot of times for things, you know, it whether it's a certain facility or a certain provider or a certain type of thing, there are certain people um, who those actions need to go to all the time, um, or maybe the same subject or types need to be associated um, with that specific action category really that you're creating. So something that's helped a lot of our clients um, in knowing when, like where and when to send stuff to us or for us to know um, what and to who to send things to at their practice um, that's been helpful is to use the action template. So for that, um, I'm going to go here to my menu and then file, you know, Therese covered everything with the stars. So if you would find that action templates is something um, that you're commonly doing for configuration, you could click in the star there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and click on action template. So you will see here, um, we already have quite a few that are built. I will walk you through. Um, it's a very simple configuration of, of how to create a new action template. Um, but first, I'll just show you one that if you just want to look at um, different items in it or make any updates to it, um, a quick way you can do that. All of these are hyperlinks. Um, so you can click on, let's say, the paper resolve. And for that, if I wanted to update this for maybe even my my priority, if I want it to turn my tea jelly bean red whenever I have this certain action assigned to me, um, I can set that for high. I can change who it's going to be assigned to uh, for the user. And then I could also update my action type and subject. Um, and I'll go over attachments here in just a second. But if I'm going to add a new one, I'm just gonna simply click on add. Here in the template name, um, I'm going to give it um, a name that we can search by. So I'm just going to say ICD correction. Um, now, from the drop downs here in both the action type and the subject, you'll see quite a few um, that we already have built here. But if it was something that you know you're looking here and you're like, well, that actual type isn't really mentioned. If you want something like in this case, we've got CPT inquiry. If we wanted um, an action type that says ICD inquiry, we can build that straight from here. So we would click on the ellipsis or the little three dots, and then we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and where it's the, the very last um, line where there's a plus sign in that add action type, this is where we're gonna type in what we're building. So ICD inquiry. I'm going to click the plus sign and then that does add that to my list. Now, if I want that to be further up in the list and not at the bottom, then I can click on this and then essentially you can just drag it and drop it to where you want it to be. I'm going to click OK. And now that I have built that and added it, I'll need to select that in my list. So for subject, you would do the same thing if you wanted to build a new subject, but we'll go ahead and just use um, one that we already have. So coding diagnosis codes. And then for my assigned to, I can select um, from my user list, which again, if I don't have a lot of users, then that's you know pretty simple to pick through. But if you do have a lot of users in your system, um, it's probably gonna be quicker to click on the ellipsis and from this, you can even search for staff um, if you have a lot of providers and maybe you're building this specific to um, a provider. You can narrow it down in the staff search by saying all providers um, if you're only looking for staff members, but it is going to default to all providers and staff. So I'm going to just type in the last name of the person who I want this listed to. Again, here's another option where I can add this user as my favorite by clicking in the star. Then I'm gonna click okay. And I'm just gonna keep my priority here as lower normal, but again, just kind of with um, a lot of things, if you want something to be high priority and you can label it that way so it turns out jelly bee red, um, you would change that priority to high. Um, now, I did say I was going to go over the attachments as well. So um, you do have, depending on why you're creating this template, if it's something that you're going to have a specialty form that needs to be attached to that template, um, or if you're using it for clinical reasons and you want to add a lab order, DI, or procedure, um, you can do that from here just by simply clicking on Browse for whatever category it is. And you can click in the checkbox, click OK. 
And then that specific form or that order will also be linked in to this template. So now I'll click OK. And then here as well, um, you do have the delete option too. Um, we would only recommend doing that if you build it and then haven't used it yet and say, you know, oh crap, I, I didn't do that correctly or I don't really end up needing that. You can just click in the checkbox and click delete. Um, there is the update option, but it's just as simple, you know, to click on that hyperlink like I showed you earlier as well. Um, so that is creating the action template. So now I'm gonna show you how you would actually use that template. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on my T. I'm gonna go to new action. And then I'm gonna do a search for my patient. Going to select that patient. And then even though you see other required fields here, such as the subject and the assigned to, I don't have to fill those in. I can come down here and click on merge template, select the actual template, click OK, and you'll see here the type, the subject, and the assigned to filled in. So this is something that is just a, you know, a quick way that if you're always creating actions, you know, repetitively for a lot of the same things, um, instead of having to build or add those uh, fields in every single time, you can create templates and just um, merge them into the actual action. I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of there. Um, now we're going to move on to talking a little bit about no-show CPT rules. So uh, we do have a mixture of clients who sometimes want to bill for no-show, sometimes they don't. You know, a perfect example is maybe the first no-show they're not going to bill for, but afterwards. Um, if patients no show in the future, they're going to bill for that. Um, you know, there's just different scenarios. So um, if you sometimes want to bill for no shows and sometimes you do not want to, one of the first key things that you would want to do is to make sure you have two no show visit statuses, one that is set as billable and one that is set as non billable. So I would go to admin here at the bottom. Then select admin again. And then always when you come into this section, it's going to ask you to log in with your credentials. So I'll do that. Then I'm going to click on user admin and I'm going to go to my visit status codes. So here in my list, you see I've already got a no show visit status and it's um, called no show non billable. Also, if you look in this billable column, it says no. Now, if this said no show billable, but the billable option was showing as no, I could simply change that by clicking on the pencil and then checking the box for billable. But here I'm just gonna create a brand new visit status. So I'm gonna click on add. I'm gonna call this NSC, no show billable. You can assign a color. And then I'm going to set it to billable and click save. Okay, it's telling me it already exists. So just for the sake of time, I'll change that. Okay, so another thing you want to make sure before you would set up a no-show CPT rule, and I'll explain here in just a second to the benefit of having the no-show CPT rules, um, but I'm first going to cover making sure you have a no-show uh, dummy CPT code. So for that, if we go to menu, billing, CPT, and CPT HCPCS codes. So for this, if you're wondering whether you have a no-show CPT or not, you can certainly look in the CPT search, the name search, so on and so forth. So in this case, I do see that I already have a no-show bill patient. Now, if there were any adjustments that I wanted to make to that or changes, again, click on your pencil icon. I do see that I've already got a set fee of $25 loaded to that, so I don't want to change that. Um, one thing that is helpful is if you click here on the pencil icon to select um, that code to be built to patient only. So you have to be careful with that. Um, if you are creating a code, 
that you do not ever want to go to an insurance company, it always just needs to go to the patient, then you would select this option. But if, of course, if there's times that sometimes it would go to insurance or sometimes it would go to patient, um, then you would not want to select that option because you can always um, update that at the claim level. Um, so I'm going to click OK. Now, um, the last thing before we go into the no shift CPT rules is validating that CPT. So in this case, this code was already there, but if I want to make sure that it shows as an active valid code, or if I would have added a new code um, and I want to make sure it shows active, I'm going to have to validate that. So we'll go back to menu, reports. We're then going to go to the report console. And then I'm going to go towards the bottom under the utilities section. You'll see CPT HICPIC validation and logs. So I'm going to type in my code and click search. Now, if it does not find the code at all, then it's just going to show like it does right now, nothing on the screen. And I don't remember what the code was I actually used for that. Um, but in the interest of time, the, what would show up here if I typed in the CPT code and if it was not yet validated, um, it would just show up here and then I could set the dates of when I wanted that code to be active. So, of course, we always advise, especially when it's like a dummy or generic code situation, to set your future date, you know, really far out, 10 years, 20 years, um, infinity, so on and so forth. So, um, you'll just want to make sure you do that. Now, the benefits of the no-show CPT rules, um, commonly what we find with practices, if they do have a situation, um, whether it's every now and then or commonly that they want to bill for a no-show, they update the visit status, but before these rules existed, they would have to go into the progress note, add the dummy CPT code, um, mark that progress note is either done or locked, depending on what they created claims off of, or they could create a claim right then and there from the progress note. But if they only create claims through the scheduled job um, or the claims IPE, they would either, like I said, mark that done or lock it. And then when that job runs, then it would be created. But that's still several manual steps. So the no-show CPT rules really eliminates those steps. So where I would go for the configuration for that, I'm going to go back to menu, billing, back to CPT, and then no show and late cancel CPT. So for here, we do already have a rule, and that's what I'll walk you through. Um, but if you wanted to create a new one, all you would have to do is click add. One thing I do want to mention just before I forget is like um, for Medicaid, for example, if you're not ever going to bill a no-show uh, medi uh, Medicaid patient for a no-show, you can exclude those insurances from the rules. So you can either uh, click on exclude insurance, pick a specific insurance from that tab um, by clicking add, or you can pick the insurance group and then click OK and click save. Now, from within the rule, I'm going to click on the pencil icon again. And this is where you um, do all the configuration. So, you know, the rule name, you can name it whatever you want to. Um, no show billable is pretty common. Um, from the visit status, so when you click on that, it's only going to show you the, the billable visit statuses. So, earlier you saw that I had the no-show uh, non-billable, and that doesn't show in this list. And the reason why is because it's set as non-billable. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick the visit status that this rule is going to work off of. I'm going to associate my no-show CPT as well. So again, since this was built, it's already there. But if you were building this from scratch, you would click on the ellipsis, and then you get your CPT search to where you could select the code and click OK which actually I just messed that up. So let me go back and fix this real quick. And then you also have the ability to um, use all to set it for all appointment dates, or if you only want this rule to start on a certain date or maybe end on a certain date. Now, it is important to know that even when you select all, it's not going to go back in time. So it's once we complete this configuration, it's not going to go back 
on you know any encounter that had that visit status and and go through the role process and create that claim. It's just going to be from the time you create that role going forward. Um, you also have the ability to exclude or include only certain providers, facilities, or visit types, or you can include everything. If you want to include everything, you would just keep select all um, highlighted on in all three sections. Um, if you are excluding or including certain facilities, visit types, or providers, you would just click on add and then select from that list. Now, this is another important part um, of which box you select here at the bottom. So if you are creating claims off of a locked progress note, which is the recommendation, um, we would want to make sure that when you pick the no-show billable visit status on the appointment, that you select this automatically lock the progress note if these parameters are met. Um, you could also set it to mark it as done as well, um, but if you don't pick anything here or if you just set it to done and you actually create off of lock, then it's never going to, your, your claim is never going to be created. But how this essentially works, though, is when a patient comes in, you know, after this configuration is done and, or if they don't come in, I should say, and the visit status that you pick is no show billable, instant and you click okay on the appointment instantaneously it is going to add that cpt code in the progress note it's going to automatically lock it and then whenever you either uh, run your claims ipe or if you have the claim creation pm scheduled uh, job set up then when that runs it's going to create that claim um, and put it in the pending status for you. Now, one thing that is important to know about this is um, with if you do chart prep maybe a day or two ahead of time, if you've already pulled in medications and marked them as verified, because sometimes we do run across that with practices, um, which of course, you know, you need to be verifying those medications when that patient is actually there. But if you pull those forward and mark it as verified, then this rule does not work. So that's just something to, to keep in mind. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Tells me that the update was made successfully, and now my role is there, so it would be ready, ready to use. Um, I'm then going to go ahead and move into payment plan. So the payment plan module, um, as far as the configuration and setting it up, um, can kind of be a, a webinar in itself. So I'm not going to go through the full process, but I'm going to show you some things and, and talk through it before we get to those tips and tricks, just in the interest of time. So to get to the payment plan module, I'm going to go to billing, and then I'm going to select payment plan. Now, it's important to know if you're wanting to get to uh, the payment plan configuration, there's a couple ways to do it. This is the quickest way, um, but you do have the ability if you're actually setting up a payment plan for a patient, instead of coming here, if you go to the patient's hub, then on the account inquiry, you'll see that little green carrot, as some people call it. Um, and if you click on that, you'll have a drop down to create a payment plan, create a patient estimate, or to uh, create a patient payment. So you can do the payment plan from there as well. So um, I do also want to mention with the payment plans, um, there, are, there are several security settings um, that go with this module. So in order to edit the configuration, um, to set up a payment plan, approve a payment plan, delete a payment plan, so on and so forth. There are um, some security settings around that. Um, but the configuration, so if I click on the payment plan button here, I'm gonna go to, just like it says, payment plan configuration. So with this, this is where you have the ability for payment plans that if you want to set a percentage of a balance to be the minimum monthly amount, or a certain dollar value to be the minimum monthly payment amount, whichever is greater, you can set that. So if you wanna say it needs to be either 10% of the balance monthly or at least $40 a month or something, you can um, add that information in here. And then you don't have to use this approval required for, but if you do have balances over a certain amount or for um, a time frame of a payment plan to extend past, then you can set that up for approval to where it has to go to someone to do that. So with, you would set it up just like I have here. You would select the approval required for. You would put in the balance if the term limit was over a certain amount. And then who that user is, that needs to be the approver. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now, if I wanted from this screen to create a new payment plan, I would again just click on my payment plan button and say new payment plan. But again, like I said, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and just go into an existing one and, and show that to you. Okay. So there's a lot of information on this screen. Um, you can get to the account inquiry directly from here, which is nice if you want to take a look at, you know, all the outstanding balances that a patient has. Um, but it is important to know for the payment plan, um, you can set this at any time. So it can be after the claim and balances, you know, are already on the account. So in that case, it would be outstanding balances. Um, if you use the patient cost estimator and you're setting up an estimate for a patient, you know, maybe for a surgery or something like that, um, you can link that actual estimate you created here. And then if you're doing like a prepayment or a deposit even on a surgery without that estimate, um, you would use this other section um, and you can also create a claim directly from there too. Now, just like anything, you know, you're going to have a payment plan status. So it always starts out in pending. Um, but if it's one that needs to go for approval, it will then move, you can move it to pending approval. Um, that person can approve it or deny. Um, but once it's all approved and everything's active on it, it will be open. Um, you would give it a label. And then your payment plan type. Um, for that, I'm going to click on the ellipsis. Again, you see here we have several options, but if you wanted to create new ones, you would just click on new. And then the payment plan details. So most of this section here, um, really from the balance due from patient claims down to payment plan initial balance due, those amounts are going to pull in, um, but those amounts are going to pull through from the right hand side. So it's pulling from your estimate, um, outstanding balances, or any future uh, prepayment or deposit you pulled in. Um, and you can post a payment from here if they want to make a down payment, possibly right from the payment plan. Um, it will then calculate the amount that's due. It's going to tell you when the first payment is due, which you have the ability that you can change that if you want to by clicking on the calendar. You can play around as well with the terms. So, you know, if a patient's trying to figure out how much they can afford, um, you know, just taking that balance and dividing it up against different months, you can easily change that here. Um, and then it's going to tell you what that monthly payment would be. Um, you have the ability to, so if, um, for the agreement section, so if you want to use um, an ECW letter, so you can load and you can use um, the tags on that to create an actual payment plan agreement. Um, that can be uh, generated, signed, saved back in their chart. Um, that's super helpful. Um, a lot of people ask with a payment plan, you know, can you tell on that patient's account without having to use like the old method of a collection, you know, an internal collection cycle for payment plan? Can you tell they're on a payment plan? And the answer is yes. Um, it'll show up as a billing alert. So, you know, you have in the, the global and the billing alert, insurance alert, um, the MU alert might still pop up, and then there would actually be a payment plan tab there as well. But all that would show on there is exactly what you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen here under installments and associated payments. So it would tell you um, their payment due dates, the amounts. It would tell you if they paid on that, and then it would update, of course, what, what the balance is. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things from here you can do. But a lot of people, the reason why um, this payment plan module has been so helpful um, versus uh, you know, a lot of traditional ways that people used to document them in ECW is it would be really hard to manage and you'd have to you know, really look in the account to see when were the payments due and you know, were, they, were they actually overdue or had they not been paid at all? And this payment plan module helps you if you come right in here to see when the next due date is. Now you can see that the ones highlighted in red, those are those are overdue. Um, but you can play with your filters at the top here as far as, you know, if you have a lot of payment plans in here, you can say, you know, that you only want to see the ones that are overdue or a certain balance, um, certain payment plan types, things like that. Um, now, of course, you know, we always promote working in the system as much as you can, but if you would want to export this list and maybe give it to someone in your practice to call patients who are overdue or something like that, 
um, you could select the accounts, you could click export, and then it would give you this data in Excel. So I do have just two other quick things that I wanna go through. I know that we are getting over on time. Caitlin, is it okay to go ahead and go through those? Yeah, let's go ahead and we'll present on all the content we promised. Uh, like okay. I said, we'll send out that recording. So I think this is great. A lot of you are staying on, so go for it, Kim. Okay, sounds good. All right, so the tips for mass updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, go to, back to my billing and I'm gonna go to accounts lookup because what I'm gonna go over is account level adjustments. So there's a lot of reasons of why you could use a feature like this, but what we use and what we commonly find that's very helpful to clients who we've done optimization services on um, is for those small balance or bad debt adjustments. So um, commonly we find that, you know, people come to us and they might say, you know, oh my gosh, I've got a thousand, you know, a thousand accounts maybe of um, account balances. So not claim, but the actual patient account is, you know, between a penny and $4.99. And my bad debt adjustment is $4.99, but, you know, they're like, goodness, it's so time consuming to go through and clean all of those up. Well, you can easily do that um, within the accounts lookup. So, of course, a lot of you may be familiar with this module. Um, I'm not going to go through a whole lot of things here. Um, I just want to make sure I've got some accounts that I can work with here to show you. So, but we're just going to act like those balances that show there that they are $4.99 or less. So, if I want to select all of these accounts or if I only want to select a couple, I can do that. So, I'm going to pick these two accounts right here for Test Kathy and Test Kim. So, you can see the patient balances that are out there. If I go to options and select create patient write-offs, I'm going to pick a write-off adjustment code. So in this case, I'm gonna see, I know we've got a bad debt or small balance, but I'm not seeing it here. So just in the sake of time, I'll just pick one, a code here and click okay. Now, the nice thing about this is you don't, you're not selecting how much money each adjustment needs to be for on each claim because they're you know most of them are going to be very you know various amounts all you're saying is that you want to make the claim balance as zero so like in this case it's going to take this 492 dollars and this 1153 dollars it's going to take those actual adjustments on that whatever it needs to get that balance to zero essentially so i'll select my account i'm going to click auto post asking me to confirm am I sure I want to do that I'll say yes and then now if I filter for the accounts you'll see those are not on here anymore but I'm going to go up here to my patient lookup and I'll just show you on one of the accounts of what that looks like so if I go in here to test Kim and go to the account inquiry Sorry, just a little bit of lag here, guys. Okay, and then here you can see on the right-hand side that it this is my uh, auto adjustment that I just made for that $1,153. So it just made that adjustment, whatever it needed to get it down to zero. So that's something that can be very helpful. Of course, you know, you have to be careful and, um, and make sure that you know what you're doing with that. Um, but it's a very, very helpful tip, especially for those small balance or, or bad debt type adjustments. And now I'm going to show you guys just some tips and tricks of how to make mass claim updates. So I'm going to go back here to our billing left-hand band, and I'm going to go to the claims window. So oftentimes you do have to be careful uh, with making mass updates to things, kind of like with the mass adjustments that we were making, um, for the example of the small balance. But if you do have certain criteria, whether it is um, a bunch of claims in a certain status that need to be moved to another one, maybe you've got a batch of claims that need to be switched from insurance responsibility to patient, um, maybe you simply just created claims and you didn't mean to, and you need to delete those, um, make provider updates to claims or things of that nature. Um, you can use your filters up here at the top of the claims window um, to 
to filter down to a lot of different areas. Now, just because this is our test environment, I'm gonna go ahead and set the date back pretty far um, just to make sure that I've got some claims that I can work with and show you guys. Let me set my date, say I wanna look at all claims and click lookup. So as you, many of you guys are probably familiar, even though this is showing me that there are um, 40, 46 pages of claims, these updates that I make are going to apply traditionally to 20 at a time. Now, there are a couple areas where you can say that you want it to apply to a certain number of claims, but that's pretty limited. So if I just have this batch of claims here, and let's say that on these first 20, um, I want to make a mass update, I'm going to click in the checkbox at the top of the claim uh, header. I'm then gonna click on billing, selected claims, and here's where you see your options. So for change claim status, for example, I can select that item. Okay, so here is where it's telling me that this is 20 at, at a time. Um, I can then pick what status I want these to go into. So right now, since I said all claims, these are in various statuses, but let's say the ones I selected, I wanna move to code correct error. I'm gonna select that, click done. It's telling me to confirm that I do wanna take this action. If I say yes, now it's refreshing my screen and those claims have been moved. Um, but again, selecting the next set of claims, clicking on the billing button, click selected claims. I just want you guys to see some of the other options that are here that maybe I didn't mention. So um, again, talking about creating the claims um, that were an error and deleting them, it could be the same that you created them as UVs or you created them as dental claims and you meant to create them as a HICFA or vice versa. You could select those claims and then you could say you want to change it to a HICFA, a UV, or a dental. Um, like we went over for the mass account updates, um, and I made sure that you guys knew that that's for the full account level for the patient balances, not just a specific claim. But here is where if you have a, a set of different claims, you can write off those claims and still have the same option to select your adjustment code and say that you want that balance to come to zero. Um, you can split claims in mass from here. You can also reassign provider numbers and even reassign uh, providers. Um, another thing that is helpful from here is being able to assign the claims. So if you use the My Claims feature um, within eClinical Works that shows up in the T Jelly Bean, then if you have this set of claims and you want to assign that to a particular user, you could select assign claims to. You can pick your user, again, either from the drop down list or if you have a lot of people in your ECW environment, you can click on the ellipsis and then do a search for the providers um, or the, the providers or the staff members that you are looking for to assign those claims to. So I'm going to go ahead and select a user. Click OK, click OK again, and now those claims have been assigned to that user. So this wraps up the efficiency tracking uh, category of going over action templates, no-show CPT rules, uh, reducing some manual work by the payment plan module, and then some tips and tricks for making mass updates either at the account level for adjustments or for mass claim updates. So now I'm going to hand it back over to Caitlin and Adrian to close us out with more information about optimization services through Rebel. Adrian, I think you wanted to talk a little bit about an offer we have for um, those that are on the line if they're looking into optimization services. Sure. Yes. And thanks, ladies. You guys did an awesome job. Yeah, I'll keep it quick and brief. I know we've ran over time, but just kind of where do we go from here? So a lot of you on the line um, obviously have a lot of interest, a lot of the um, research and study. And I think, Caitlin, you shared a recent article from HR Intelligence just talking about how practices are really now, now that COVID, the first crazy wave has passed, we're starting to kind of get our bearings again. They're really trying to now, organizations are wanting to go ahead and tackle HR optimization. So 57% um, of you, um, our audience today, had mentioned at the beginning of the webinar when you did that poll earlier, Caitlin, just mentioned that you just really don't know where to start. So that is something that we can help you with. So. Kim and Therese gave you some great tips today. You can take those and uh, try to put those in place in your practice. 
Um, so those are some great resources. We also are doing an eClinical Works optimization, um, a free ECW database review. So we have uh, several key points that we can access your system and kind of make sure that you're utilizing and adapting. Or if you really are looking for a really more full-blown, deep dive, understanding um, more in depth what features are available within ECW that maybe you're not using, um, automation that could be in place that's maybe not there. If any of your physicians are struggling or clinicians with feeling like, oh, we're just doing too many clicks and you want some more good tips like Therese talked about today, um, those are things that we can help with. And uh, even on the PM side, if you're really wanting to understand more, um, you know, how does my practice stack up against MGMA best performers? Are there any revenue trends that we should be aware of or pay attention or what is our net collection rate and our gross collection th rate things that we would look at from a revenue performance standpoint if those are questions that you don't know or you're unsure of and you want to understand you know hey in your expert opinion and your experience um, you know what do you think the dollar amount looks like that maybe we could um, recoup if we had better processes in place or better revenue cycle those are all things that we can help with so for the 64% of you that said we just don't have time, well, we can't give you that, but if you're willing to commit to giving us a little bit of your time, we can certainly have several options that can really help give you a place to start. Take all that good information that you give you, will give you with the database opt optimization reviews, and you can go and deploy those in your practice, or maybe you need our help, and, and maybe we can help you with the next phase and actually help you with the training or the revenue cycle. Those are all things that we're here to support you in any way that we can. We wanna give you the tools to do it yourself, or if you need to lean on an expert resource, you know, we're here for that as well. So anywhere that we can help or questions or concerns, I know myself and my team, we, we'd love the opportunity to kind of visit with you and talk a little bit more about your practice to see what direction makes most sense for you guys. But at minimum, feel free to take advantage of the free database audit that we're doing for all of you guys who registered today. Thanks so much, Adrian. Um, yes, so we will include a link to that if that's something you're interested in. Uh, just look for an email from us later today. Uh, in that email, we are also going to give you a link to register for some of our upcoming webinars here. The first one will be next Thursday. We're going to talk about the future of healthcare, how telehealth fits into that. And then we'll have another one of our ECW trainers on the line to talk about some of the new features available in eClinical Works to assist with telehealth. And then come September, we're focusing on eClinical Works analytics. That'll be a three part series that we're super excited about. So you can check your email. We'll have links to register for those if you're interested, along with the recording. I see a lot of questions that came in. And I think what we're going to do here is get back to you individually with your questions and then also make those available on our blog so that we can share that information with everyone that signed up. So again, thanks so much for taking time today to join us. Keep an eye out for our email and take care. Thanks everybody.